Folks, my next guest has seen a whole lot over her 90 years of life. She, of course, uh, is one of the most noted speakers in this country. She makes it plain when it comes to racism, bigotry, discrimination, sexism. Uh, I don't think she's ever been called introverted. Uh, she, uh, of course, uh, will speak her mind regardless of the audience. Uh, and uh, I love it. She and I got together at the University of Michigan a few years ago. We had a fantastic panel. I don't even know why the moderator was there. They should just let me and Jane just handle ourselves. <laughs> and also, there's a new book out, y'all. Uh, the, the author interviewed me for, about this book. Uh, it's called Shades of Brown, the official biography of Jane Elliott and the Blue Eyes, Brown Eyes Exercise by author Todd M. Mealy. Uh, this is the book right here. Uh, and when I was introduced to her, Jane held up. She's got my book, White Fear, uh, there as well. So there you go. So, Jay, let's just jump right in. You saw what happened on Tuesday. Break it down. Yeah, what, what do you think? What happened, what happened on Tuesday is the citizens of the United States of America decided to listen to a racist, sexist, crafty crook who has no business being in the presidency of the United States of America. We know that, but you see right now we are in a situation where people who are pale, stale, and male are scared to death. And it's, you know, I read the book White Fear a long time ago when it first came out. And I've watched this thing happen over the last 30 years, particularly the last 20 years. I've watched white males become increasingly frightened of the fact that they are going to lose their numerical majority in the United States of America. And the damn fools don't even realize that they have always been in the numerical minority worldwide. Only 15 to 18% of the po human population of the earth is classified as white. And let's make no mistake about this. White is a misnomer. There are no white people. I am not the color of this collar on my shirt. And you are not the color of the OTE on your shirt. On your shirt, we aren't white and we aren't black. We are all shades of brown. And it's time for us to realize that. And it's time for us to enjoy that fact. And it's time for us to stop talking about race. There's only one race of pe people on the face of the earth, and that's the human race. And <laughs> oh my God, how long is it going to take us to have social studies teachers? tell our students at the junior high and high school level that the word race, meaning a specific group of people, came out of France in 1580. How long is it going to take us to realize that the idea of whiteness and blackness, yeah, quit laughing, this ain't funny, don't do something else. <laughs> so Jane, uh, uh, Jane, you made, that, you, you made that point there, and we talked, they talked about how these young white men have been, quote, radicalized. You now have these podcasts and others, and they're talking about toxic masculinity, and you've got people like uh, Senator Josh Hawley and Tucker Carlson, you know, and even Congressman Byron Donalds. We've got the return to masculine men. We have feminized men. And so, and Trump plays into that, and he's strong and tough, uh, and so, when you see these demos, when you see 1834 and these young men uh, saying, yeah, Trump is our guy, what you're laying out is right. They're, they're scared to death. It's like, well, you know, where's the place for men in our society? Yeah, ass has been running every damn thing for the longest. But what the problem is, these aren't men. These are boys. And they are, they are absolutely encouraged to remain boys instead of to grow into men. Becoming a man takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort and it takes some study and it takes some education. Any damn fool can be a boy. We've got a lot of them running around. And right now, the ones who voted for Donald Trump this, this last week were, was a whole bunch of boys, grown tall, who don't know what's good for them and certainly don't know what's good for the world. We're going to have to depend on women because men can't be, can't, don't want to stop being boys. Women have no choice. There's a time to, comes a time in every person, woman's female's life, when she has to grow up and be a woman. Men don't have to do that. They can be boys for as long as they live. And if you don't believe that, look at Donna Soros T. Rump. 
He will be a boy for as long as he draws breath because he is encouraged to not to think, but just to react and not to respond intelligently, but to respond with anger and petulance. And we don't need an angry, petulant boy in the White House ever again. But that's what we have. And we're going to have that for the next four years. What do you make of white women? Every, the, the, there was a belief that because of the Dobbs decision, that white women were finally going to stop rewarding Donald Trump. They voted for him in 2016. They voted for him in 2020. According to the polls, uh, hey, Vice President Kamala Harris was doing way better with white voters. She was, according to the polls, she was getting a higher share of white voters than even Joe Biden did. And then come Tuesday, nope, none of that happened. White women are just as ignorant about race and sex as white men are. And we'll stay that way as long as we have an education system that describes all the important things that have ever been done in this world as having been done by white males and a few white females. As long as we don't tell the truth in history, as long as we don't tell the truth in social studies, as long as we teach the lie, as long as we refuse to deal with the truth, that's how long we'll have this problem. And white women don't seem to realize that Donald Trump is going to use them. They need to realize that when he said, we've got to put a border, we've got to put a wall, on the southern border of the United States because we've got to keep those brown-skinned people out because brown-skinned people reproduce too rapidly. He was absolutely serious. This man is a blatant racist, and he has prepared. The reason he closed Planned Parenthood clinics for a while, and now they're trying to get them open, is because he was quite certain that Planned Parenthood clinics, the main thing they did was offer abortions to white women. That's not what Planned Parenthood clinics are about. They're about a whole lot of things, providing a whole lot of services, for, for women who can't afford the, to go to the local doctor, but they can go to the Planned Parenthood clinic. He did a real ugly thing when he closed his clinics, and he closed them so that he could keep white women from getting abortions. I've got news for him. If a white woman wants an abortion, she's going to get an abortion. And there's no way he or anybody else on the face of the earth is going to be able to stop her if she can find somebody who's willing to help her do it. And I'm willing to help her do it. Until we make white males, males, period, males of all colors, and there's only two, and that's brown, and only one in that shade, the brown. But until we start making males as responsible for pregnancy as women are, that's how long we're going to have the problem of abortion. If we could just pass legislation that said that every man who contributed to an unwanted pregnancy would have to submit to involuntary vasectomy, I'll bet we could do away with abortion in a hurry, don't you think so? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, on that particular point there, when you talk about, when you talk about um, uh, uh, Trump and these Republicans, listen, Elon Musk, apartheid Elon wait, Musk... Wait, 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 let me stop you there. We've got to stop calling the Republican Party the Republican Party. Donald Trump knocked the L, the letter L, out of the word Republican and turned it into Republican because of his obsession with the pubic area. It's time to call it what it is. And he also messed up the word, this United, Supreme, United States Supreme Court. It is now the United States Sperm Court, because all he and his recent appointees to that court are interested in is sperm cells and what color children they will be produced by their use. It's time to change the language to fit the situation. These are Republican, Republicans, and it's a sperm court. Okay, what, you, what were you saying? Uh, first of all, uh, <laughs> no, go to the shot of Greg, Henry Spitchin. Greg Carr was sitting there, and Naomi Carter was sitting there. Their mouth was wide open, cracking up when you, when you said that. Uh, I'm gonna go to them in a second. But here's the thing right there, there that you're talking about. But are there ears, wait, wait, are there ears open? <laughs> oh, we yeah. We have to open our ears. We got to open our ears and then open our mouths to say something that makes sense. And Republican Party makes sense. Republican doesn't. Donald Trump isn't interested in the public arena. He is interested in the pubic area. Let's call it what it is. You okay, talked about, sorry, again, one. Trump and Planned Parenthood, and you got apartheid Elon Musk. And he is always tweeting... <laughs> he's always tweeting about, oh... The population, the population drop, uh, the lack of birthing babies. These folks, what they want is simple. They want white women to shut up 
stop going to college, stop taking jobs, lay down, have babies, and just reproduce. Because this is all about fear of losing the white majority. They're going to lose. They might as well give it up because they're going to lose. Number one, let's stop calling Elon Musk, Elon Musk. I taught dyslexic students for years, male dyslexic students. If you move the letters in his name around, you come up with lone scum. And that's what he is. He's lone scum. He is scum. We need to realize that and we need to stop admiring him because he is able to make so much money off the efforts of other human beings. It's time to give that up. You also need to know that women have the right to decide what to do with their bodies. No man had better tell me or any other, in, any other intelligent woman what to do with their body until you can produce a child by birth as I, I can. Don't tell me what to do with my body. Ch but women have the right to say no. Absolutely not. This will not. This will not happen. The um, you, let's talk about Latinos, Latino men as well. Uh, I just had a segment or the reporter earlier uh, who said point blank, "You've got Latinos in this country. They see themselves as white, as white adjacent. They will vote accordingly. <laughs> accordingly, they don't see themselves as brown." They will support somebody who will, who wants to deport literally their family members. Uh, and absolutely, go ahead. Because they have been they have been brainwashed to the idea of the rightness of whiteness. There are no white people. We are all shades of brown. We have to realize that those Latinos are just as brown as all the rest of us, and they came from the same place that you and I did. We all came from a country on the continent of Africa. We all started out brown, and it's time for us to realize that all human beings are shades of brown. And I cannot understand why, oh, I do too, I understand why Latinos are considered calling themselves white, because that's a way to get, a, to get over in this country. If you can prove that you have white ancestry, you're going to be all right. But what they don't realize is, in the very, very near future, being able to prove that you have African-American, African ancestry is going to make you all right because we are all originally from a country on the continent of Africa. We've got to get over the idea of the rightness of whiteness. It came up during the Spanish Inquisition and should have been destroyed immediately. We've only had to deal with this for less than 500 years. It's time to give it up. We're going to take a quick break and come back. You know what? I'm not going to go to a break. Let me just go ahead right now. Forget the break. Um, I'm going to go right to questions. Let me first start um, with... Uh, Greg, I'm going to start with you, because you, 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 the look on your face uh, when, when Jane said uh, Republicans uh, was, was too hilarious, so I'm going to start with you. Go right ahead. Yeah, I, you know, I'd love to... Have, uh... Uh, Sister Elliot, I'd love to ask you about Francis Chris Wilson, but I think I, I'll hold off on that. I want to follow up with with uh, how you uh, just, your, your most recent comment there the, uh, when you talked about at some point having African ancestry uh, will be a benefit. We certainly did see that in more Spain, as you say. You see uh, a touch of the more did distinguish you. How would that reversal happen in the racial binary that we have today, particularly since whiteness is a global phenomenon, and in places like, you know, Southern Europe and other places where it's clearly mixing that is going on there for a thousand years, it hasn't translated into any benefit for black people. How do you see that reversal happening? Because we have been brainwashed by our education system to the idea of the rightness of whiteness. There are no white people. We've got to get over the idea that people came... And just this week, I got a letter from somebody who said, after all, white people were here first. They came from Europe, and they were here first. And I thought, oh, my God, what are we going to do about this? People, all you have to do is trace your ancestry back as far as you can, and you'll find that every one of you have ancestors who came from a country on the continent of Africa. If they didn't, they came from another planet. Every human being on the face of the earth came from a country in Africa originally. You go to church on Sunday or you go to whatever you worship on Sunday, if you're a Christian, you go and you look at a picture on the, up behind the minister or whatever it is you're calling your religious leader, and you'll see a man who looked nothing 
like what Jesus Christ looked like. According to the Bible, he had kinky, woolly hair and feet of bronze. If it was good enough for Jesus, I would think it would be good enough for me and good enough for people like me. It's time for us to admit that our heritage over thousands of years is brown. It's not black, it's brown. We are all shades of brown, and it's time to get used to that and to enjoy it. And make no mistake about this. The number of white babies that are being born is getting less and less because white women are tired of being used. White women are tired of being treated like second-class citizens because they can be used by somebody like Donald Source T. Rump. It's time to take a, it's time to get over the idea that only women are responsible for, for pregnancy. It takes two people to make a pregnancy. Now, eventually, I think at the beginning it didn't. I think at the beginning you had two women, you could put two, two female egg cells together in a petri dish, mammal cells, break down the cell wall and combine those cells and come up with another female mammal. That's probably the way human beings began. But we, all our history and, all our, and the Bible, except for one, one book, is written by males. So history says males did all the important things that were done, thought all the important thoughts and did all, fought all the important fights. It's not true. It couldn't have happened if it hadn't been for the women who were there to make more peoples. It's time to get over this idea. What we're doing is blatantly sexist, blatantly racist, and blatantly ignorant. We are living in an ignorant society, and it's going to get more so because of banning books and banning speakers and banning ideas. And right now we're in a situation where people are banning any idea that would that would even question the superiority of whiteness. Jane, Jane, no Jane, you told me as whiteness. Jane, you told me this book about you from Todd Neely is uh, on ban list. Yeah, I'm, I'm on ban list, and I think that is. I'm not sure that that is. I know I am. I am banned on all college and university campuses. Wow. Have been for over... Oh, yeah, I am a dangerous person, and I've realized that. And I am absolutely delighted to be called somebody who is dangerous for college students to listen to. I'm tickled to death. Because that means that what I have to say is threatening to people who voted for Donosaurus T. Rump. Well, that's also why I, I, that's why I love having my own platform, uh, because they can keep you off college campuses, but they can't keep you off this show, because I own it. Uh, and that's why we got to have <laughs> unfiltered programming uh, for folks like you. Uh, Niambi. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I want to go back to something um, you mentioned a moment ago about white birth rates dropping. I know that has been a fixation on um, the right wing, yet we still see white women voting for white supremacy. So what do you think is happening there? It isn't, it isn't just women of color who are stupid. White women get reinforced for being stupid. And we've been doing that for a good many years. We do that one by calling the Virgin Mary blonde haired, blue eyed, fair skinned. We set ourselves up to fail, and then when we fail, we blame it on somebody else. It's time for us to realize that there is no such thing as a white woman. There is no such thing as a black woman. But we use those words because for white women, white women use it because, according to the person who started this whole thing of race, Torquemada during the Spanish Inquisition. He was, he was going to kill everybody who wasn't Christian, and he was going to turn all the Christians into Catholics. He had killed 2,000 people before somebody made him aware of the fact that many of the people he had killed were Christians. At that time, he realized that you couldn't tell what a person's religion was by looking at them, so he decided he'd have to come up with a way to make that determination. So he called the lighter, and people all people were shades of brown at that time, and they are now. He called the lighter brown skinned people white because white is the color of purity and goodness. He called the darker skinned people black because black is the color of savagery and evil. And we have been living with that nonsense for less than 500 years. It's time to give it up. There are no white women and there are no black women. We are all shades of brown. And you and I, whether you want to know it or whether you want to admit it or not, are 30th to 50th cousins because our ancestors came from the same place. And came from the same came from the same race. There's only one race on the face of the earth. It's the human race, and we're all members of it. 